hello and welcome to a, another episode, a brand new episode of what will now be called the Snooker Loopy Podcast. That's the name me and Joe have settled on. And this will be, I'm going to call this episode zero because we're still in the, the testing stage, still trying to work out different uh, ways of recording the audio to make it all sound good and as good as possible for you guys. But this is episode zero because it's the kind of start of the season we're mainly going to go over our q school predictions but we've also had of course the first two days of the big one the uh the championship league which always sounds a bit too much like the champions league are you a <laughs> are you a big fan of this ranking event that is sometimes not a ranking event joe well uh, it's, it's pretty much two years ago to the day where it it was the return of sport wasn't it after the pandemic with the championship league and i remember i think it was on itv4 um and you know i think it's been riding off that crest of the wave of people being interested in it um i've got to admit it's not a tournament i tune in for particularly um i don't know i'm just not that bothered about it really the uh, there are certain events on the calendar that I, that I see as a bit of a Mickey Mouse practice, a glorified practice tournament, and this is definitely one of them for me. Yeah, I think this is... Um, I I think it's a nice tournament for some of the lower down players to yeah. pick up the odd grand or two here to sort of, you know, kickstart their season mm. or keep them tidy, tidied over. But, um, I mean, yeah, I think... I think was it... Who won it? I think Mark Williams said if he won it, he wouldn't call it a ranking win. And I think that kind of sums it up, really. It's not. I, th- um... I think that was another Championship League esque tournament. It was the like Pro Series or something like that. Oh, WST Pro, which, which again the, was, was, they, they haven't it, done since. So you know, it was a it was a similar format though, wasn't it? Like mm. a round robin. I think kind it was of... best of threes that one, perhaps. But yeah, I, I wonder how uh, how long it is till we just have a. Uh, a big shootout league with them playing <laughs> the every player world championship. Yeah, yeah. Every player plays each other once, and they have a bigger uh, points total. I mean, over a course of a season, that might end up being interesting if they mm. did actually do that. But the the championship league, it it just feels a bit like uh, I don't know. It's it's it's. I always feel like it's a bit of a damp squib to start the season. Yes. No, very much so. Um, it would be like if uh, in football they had the community shield, yeah. but they played it fifty times. <laughs> yeah, or 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 if it was I don't know the the Johnston's Pain Trophy to start <laughs> off the season. You know, it, it wouldn't quite be the same, would it? Um, it's it's like the champ- Champions League in real life. The qualifying rounds, nobody really mm. cares about. Um, mm. I think it would be quite a nice idea for snooker to go down a, a, an approach of um i don't know a tennis for instance the australian open is very early in the year very early in mm-hmm. the season you obviously have a couple of warm up tournaments before it but it would be quite nice to have a, a decent sized ranking event as the first event of the season I yeah think. um I, and well, then I maybe think, have the championship yeah. league just after it and you know mm. build up that way yeah, I think that's a much better way of doing it because, uh, you know, it feels like almost like a false start to the season because it? it's like I, I don't feel like the players or the fans are massively invested in it, mm. uh, even though David Gilbert won it. And it does mean he's a ranking event winner. And I'm really glad he's a ranking event winner. Yeah, it it didn't feel like a moment when he won it. Not, not the same well, way it would yeah. have been if it was any other tournament. It was I, just like I think it's about time that snooker actually adopted a more tennis style approach to their to their tournaments and you know had which I know they've I guess tried to do in a sense with their their triple crown series and whatever but I don't think it it quite has the same meaning when Ronnie O'Sullivan has 38 ranking title or 39 ranking titles, whatever it is now. Um, and David Gilbert has won, and mm. David Gilbert's won counts just as much as the world championship Ronnie won. That that kind of doesn't sit well with me. I'd I'd like no. a sort of tiered system of you know, we you you have your 
your challenger events, if you like, which are, are more like the Championship League, Riga Masters, that sort of thing, Gibraltar. And then you have the sort of, you know, uh, normal ranking events, which are, I'm get, you know, English Open, Northern Ireland mm. Open, that sort of thing. Then you have your, like, Masters series, if you like, which could be the German mm -hmm. Masters, the, the European Masters, that sort of thing. Bigger tournaments, bigger prize pots. And then yep. you have the, the Grand Slam events, which are Worlds, UKs. The Masters you could even put in there, you know. No ranking points, but it is a, a Grand Slam event, if you like. Um, and Champion of Champions, for instance, could be in there. But I feel like that's the right way of doing it. And I feel like they have tried to do it recently with things like the the coral cup or the coral yeah. series yeah but um but now the, the, the stats are still the same if do you know what i mean yeah when, when we talk about federer nadal and Djokovic, nobody says oh nadal has won 108 titles or whatever mm. you know whereas when we talk yeah. about snooker like yes we do say seven world championships i think the bbc have started doing it where they say ronnie's won 20 majors or whatever um, mm. but it kind of, it's just the BBC that sort of say that because they like to big up their own tournaments, um, which is yeah, it's understandable. But yeah, 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 it, yeah. yeah. Um, I just think there should be something official. I think it's time to move to that now because the the ranking, the ranking point situation is so heavily distorted by the World Championship that that isn't really a true meaning of who the best players are out there and you know i think it would just it would it would mean a lot more if uh and perhaps you you go back to a rank and point system where all of the grand slams are worth mm -hmm. a certain amount of points so if you win the uk championship that's worth the same amount of points as the world championship you can still have the 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 whole benefit of it's still 500 grand to win but it's not 500,000 rank and mm -hmm. points you know I didn't think we we were going to talk about that today, but you know, I think it's an interesting point because, yeah, champ, you know, I would like there to be a bit more hype for the start of the snooker season. We're back, you know, when when F one starts, when the the F one season starts, all the focus is on that first event, and you know, something exciting to look forward to. Mm -hmm. It's similar in other sports as well, like you say with football. You know, the first weekend of Premier League football, that's always a hyped up weekend. Well, even me. even with football, when they have the community shield, like it's not a massive trophy that everyone cares about winning, but because it is a one off showpiece Wembley event, it's exciting to watch. Yeah. And you go, Oh, football's back, you get that kind of giddiness, you go, Oh, it's a big match, massive sold out crowd, like yeah. almost if snooker started with maybe an exhibition tournament, maybe that would be something that yeah. they, they you know could, they could even start with something like pop, pop black, you know, uh, yeah. something that it's got a historic name. You get the top eight, ten players in the world, and they just have a couple, a two day event of mm -hmm. best of one frame matches. You know, and not not shootout rules or anything like that. Just pure mm. pop black. Um, yeah, it's got the tradition in there. And it's got, you know, the appeal of top players in there and, mm -hmm. you know, have a decent prize pot in there. Maybe have, a, you know, a place in the champion, a, a champions up for grabs or. Um... Well, if, you, if you're going to give a place to the shootout winner, you may as well give a place to exactly. the pop black yeah, winner. Yeah, so... yeah. yeah. And maybe you could even have, I know the Masters used to have a wild card um, back in mm -hmm. the day. Um, it would be nice if perhaps you could invite a a jimmy white or, or something to that event and you know mm. bring or you know somebody that's recently retired bring them bring them in and mm. you know have a player the seniors champion or something you know mm -hmm. just just to mix it up a bit it doesn't have to be yeah. desperately serious but something to get the ball rolling yeah i mean just on the mention of the seniors uh championship of course at the Champion of Champions this year, I believe Lee Walker. Well, yes, will, yeah. will be uh, walking up to to fit his name. He'll be turning up, and uh, I think he's lost his tour card. Um, but I mean, I mean, what do you think? What do you, what do you think of that? Because I, I, you know, I'm I'm in two minds. I feel like uh, it, it 
can be quite nice for the senior guys. It gives them a bit of a reward, a bit of an actual sort of carrot on a stick to turn up and play in the seniors. Yeah. But uh, oh, you just don't see Lee Walker beating anyone in the Champion of Champions, do you? Well, no. No, that and that's sort of the issue, isn't it? I know Ronnie plays... Unless, um... and, unless somehow Jimmy White wins a ranking tournament before then and they play each other, then maybe then. Well, yes, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh... I don't know if it's absolutely certain that he'll be playing in it yet. I know there was a, the the trophies were shared around a lot last season. Um, That's very true. That's and I very think true. if they're they're shared a lot around a lot in the at the start of this season, maybe it won't go that far. I know the seniors is fairly low down the the pecking order of it, um, and I think the last few times it's been because you know one or two players have won a lot of the tournaments, um, mm-hmm. and therefore they need a lot of top ups. I think what might be a nice idea would would be to expand the champion of champions slightly mm. and perhaps have the world amateur champion in there and you know that's, the, a, that's a great idea uh, you know you could have the the basically the the champion of all of the the different regions you know like i think igor figurino oh, wins like yeah you know, and then it makes it a, a sort of um like confederations cup Idea. Yeah, like yeah, yeah, that's a really that's a really nice idea. I like that. And maybe a lot. May, maybe that's just like one in every four. They do the the champion of champions the way they currently do for three out of the four years, and then every four years they have like a ultimate sort of champ like confederations cup type of thing. Mm. You have all the world champions. You have all of the 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 triple crown winners uh, in there. Mm. You have the seniors champions. You have the 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 women's champions you have the the amateur champions you know it would be just quite a nice idea I think to to get all of those I mean you'd still end up with Ronnie versus Selby in the final or something every but, time know. every time um, yeah <laughs> <laughs> I don't well, think we're gonna end up with Ego Figueredo winning champion of champions no matter what so <laughs> we can invite gonna... them all along to take part if we want but it doesn't really help. <laughs> Well, I, I do, and that's kind of made me literally think, you know, just before we go into Q school, but it's kind and of a virtual me... champion as well, just to get that in. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Get, um, get, get, uh, Rainy now along. Mm, mm. He'd love that. I'm sure he would. I'm sure he would. Yeah. Him against the real Mark Selby. What a, what a grudge match that would well, be. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the, the, these two uh, it's going to be played in the best of spirits is what Dennis yeah. would say yeah. <laughs> um. well that's that's that, that's just before we got into Q school that's kind of made me feel like you know do you feel because I I do feel like snooker is missing more events that do involve the the nationalities of the players because it's it's a world snook at all and i would i think they've done like doubles tournaments before where you'd have two players like representing scotland or england or ireland or china or australia or well i think they um, call it the snooker world cup or whatever and it's it's just like if it's going to be a world cup then it needs to have the hype and the coverage of a world cup you know you can't just have it shied away on a chinese streaming site like because you know, again, the players who I think that's how Yang Bing Tao and Zhao Yulong first got in the Champion of Champions by winning that. Yeah. And I feel like if you're gonna get them in the Champion of Champions, then just make it a bit mm. of a bigger event. And yeah. and because if it's a World Cup, that's one where you would get worldwide viewers and you would bring in people who, you know, aren't gonna find a stream to watch. Mm. Adam Stefano from Poland but, but when it is yeah. him representing his country you're like oh okay I might exactly. tune in and ultimately snooker I think you know where where it's going where it wants to be it wants to be an Olympic sport mm-hmm. how can you expect to be an Olympic sport if you don't compete on a national stage at any point of the season mm. you know yeah like golf has the Ryder Cup you know darts mm. I think there's a there's some sort of nation's event for darts, mm. you know. Um, I can't claim to be an expert about darts, but yeah, I think you, you, there used to be something called the Nations Cup, I think, years yeah, and years yeah. ago. Um, and obviously you have the, the, what is it, the Moscone Cup or something for pool. And, yeah. You know, um, 
something like that would be quite good. Like basically, Europe versus China or something would be quite quite cool. Or you know, um, mm -hmm. if we were to have some sort of Ryder Cup of of snooker, um, yeah, that'd be good. That would be really good. The, the yeah. Virgo Cup. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, we um we we do of course have uh, some new nationalities joining the tour yeah. through uh, Q School or the other qualifying tournaments that have taken place, and we did make our our predictions. Um, I will say I, I've not seen the full list, but what I I did see is we there were two names who we picked as our our wild cards, so we both got excited by. Uh, you picked Barbar. Yes. Who, uh, I don't know if you know this, Joe, but he didn't turn up for a single well, match. Yes, I, I did. I was looking out for him. <laughs> and I picked uh, Simon Benz. <laughs> Simon who, Bevs, uh, yeah. Simon Bevs, sorry, yeah. I've forgotten his name. <laughs> Simon Bevs, <laughs> who, uh, I, you know, you look at the live scores and there's people commenting below. And someone said that Simon Bevs has not won a, a single frame in 15 matches in Q School. So he didn't qualify. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear so those those two didn't make it but who else did we pick out and didn't did any of them uh get through joe well i, I I'll, I'll read through who you picked first shall i mm -hmm. um so you went with big kurt mafflin um yeah who i i believe didn't um yeah he, he was the uh the it. The highest ranking player to, to not make it, I believe. Yeah, so Kurt Mafflin, uh, Liam Davis, who, you know, was a solid pick, I think. Mm, he didn't but, quite um, make it. I think he lost to Fergal straight away. I think they had their grudge match, didn't they? they... Yeah, and then Fergal, Fergal um, managed to uh, turn but, it around. Yeah, Fergal beat him. Um, Luck I'm of just, the Irish. I'm just Yeah, he beat him 4 3, so it was in a decider. Hmm. I mean, uh, th this run for, for Fergal in the first Q school, just because I've got my eyes on it, Liam Davis, 4-3, then Martin O'Donnell um, in the next round, 4-2, then some guy mm. called Jason Kendrick. I'm sorry, Jason, if you're listening, but I've never heard of you. Yeah, and, and Fergal, you know, give him the treatment, 4-0. Um, mm. Then Ross Muir in the in the semi-final. Um, very good, very good player. Used then, to be a pro. Yeah, and then Rory McLeod in the Again, final. someone who... He's been. He was a pro for about thirty odd years, wasn't well, he, Rory? So. You know, I mean, that's four, at least, very, very good players. Jason may mm. well be a future world champion. I don't. I don't. Oh, sorry, Jensen. It wasn't Jason. It was Jensen. Oh, um, you heard it here first, people. Jason Kendrick, <laughs> future world champion. Yeah, je yeah. Mm. yeah. Jensen. Jensen. Oh my god, I, I didn't know anybody was called Jensen other than Jensen Button. So. There we are. Uh, yeah, and then he went for Tony Knowles, who did, in, in fairness, win a couple of matches. Um, he got you know close a couple of times, but mm -hmm. um, yeah, Ben Mertens, who 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 didn't get through Q School, but he did qualify through another tournament. So I don't know whether I get points for that. Do I still? <laughs> does that still count? We'll go on. We'll we'll give you it. Then you had of course yeah. Simon Bevs. <laughs> No, um, and uh, the final one you had was Mehran uh, Maneshka. Oh, of course, yes, I followed him very. Did he? Did he do anything? Um, I, I mean, didn't... let's do a control F on the Wikipedia. Um, <laughs> Mehran. Oh, oh no, withdrawn from the first one. Oh, he's um... like he's like Barbar, isn't he? <laughs> yeah. Uh, then event two. Uh, Mehran withdrawn. Uh, Mehran, come on, come on. He's nah. We withdrew from all three. Why Tragic. would he withdraw? I mean, that's surely he surely lost his deposit on that. Yeah. Um. Oh, we, we... Jensen Kendrick actually qualified. No. <laughs> he's Kend still. He's a future world champion. Here he goes. <laughs> Jensen Kendrick qualified from event three. <laughs> uh so you got the the grand total of zero out of six tom zero out of six we're not giving me ben mertens okay yeah yes Point five so i don't six. no one out of six uh, one out of six we'll give you that right okay. i went for michael holt uh mm -hmm. who of course didn't qualify um 
It's very surprising. A lot of people uh, would have had him as the favourite to yeah. get back on tour. He had the highest break in uh, Q School Event 2, a, a one four two, which is interesting. Mm. I mean, that you know, that's a very good break and shows what a good player he still is, but didn't make it. Dean Reynolds, um, mm. I went for. Uh, I mean, Next he, year, he, won, Next he year. won a match in, in the Event 2, but then lost 4-0 to Rory McLeod. Uh, oh, lost four one to Ronnie Blake, the Ronnie Blake in the uh, event <laughs> one. I'm I'm gonna say that and Ronnie Blake will have qualified. Uh, <laughs> and then in event come three, on Ronnie, <laughs> come on Ronnie. Um, event three, where's Dean? Where is he? Come on, Dean. Uh, ah, lost four nil to the Andrew Turner. Um, oh, so yeah, Dean course. Reynolds didn't get through. Rod Lawler though. Rod Lawler made it through. Yay! Sure. I mean, I'm um, glad to see him on top. Yeah, He's Rod Lawler those... won in the first event. He beat Brandon Sargent 4 3. So uh, there's one to me. Rory McLeod was the next one, and I don't think he made it back on. Um, no. I then think I went... he got close, but not quite. Yeah, he got the final against uh, Fergal. Um, then the next one, Mickey Joyce. Uh, they can't say it's a name I recognise. Uh... <laughs> From doing well, uh, Mickey Joyce, where is he? Oh, lost 4 2 to James Cahill in the first one. Um, then uh, lost 4 2 to Callum Beresford in the in the second one. No relation to Alex Beresford, I don't think. Um, of you know, Good Morning Britain and fighting Pierce Morgan and all of that. Um, <laughs> Mickey Joyce in the third one lost to Hamim Hussein. I mean, come on. Come on. But mm. then Hamim Hussein, to be fair, got to the quarterfinals of this one. Um, wow. Lost to Lucas Kleckers in the quarters. I, I, I do apologise. Uh, by quali- uh, by quarterfinals, I mean the third final match. Because in, in Q School, they weirdly call the semi final. Uh, or, or what, what it. I think they they call the the quarter final the final because there's four yeah. winners in each event. So yeah, I think it's stupid, and they may as well just have it <laughs> as four different finals. I don't know why they have to complicate it. Like yeah, yeah. neither do how, I. How can it be a quarter final if there's not a semi final? Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. Idiots. Um, <laughs> and then I, then of course I went for Barba. So and Barba oh. didn't bother to turn up. So um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, to be fair, there's there's no proof that anybody's got that we didn't just make up Mehran, uh, Maneshka and Baba Mazia <laughs> and, you know, and just deliberately, you know, wasted mm. £2,000 on Q School just for the hilarity of this podcast. You know, That's we true, seem like those sort of people. Yeah, we might. We make so much money from this podcast. We've, we've just reinvested it in Q School. <laughs> Absolutely. But, so um, uh, so we... We, we draw there. One all. Ah, well played, Joe. Yeah, you know. So the 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 twelve winners. Um, if you're interested, uh, Rod Lawler, Fergal hey. O'Brien, Andy mm. Lee, uh, and uh, Bai Lang Ning. So very good. I think very, they're all uh, very good. Uh, young. They are, yeah. Actually, yeah. they they've come back. <laughs> yeah. Uh, next one, Adam Duffy, who I think is on there as well. Zach Surety, who I think is on there. Um, Aaron Hill, not sure. He might I think be. he's too young. I think he might be too young. Uh, and Sanderson Lamb, who definitely is. He definitely is. I recognise that. I recognise that name anywhere. Sanderson. Uh, and then event three, Lucas Clackes, who is. Jensen yep. Kendrick. Um, John. He's Astley, brand new. Who is? John Ashley is. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and James Cahill, who is so. Well, the magic of snooker 19, clearly. <laughs> but, you know, it, it brings about a perhaps more worrying uh, look of it, of, you know, they're, all but one of them were um, pros before and within yeah. the last sort of three years as well. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Not know, much uh, fresh Other than Jensen, it. good old Jensen. I mean, um, I think was it literally last season, rookie of the year? Um, there was who was it? There was oh, I can't remember is who. I think it was like uh, un, un, uh There was 
uh, some young Scottish player, I can't remember his name. But basically, there was two players who won one match, and they were in the running for Rookie of the Year. And then there was... Uh... I mean, as much as on year one won a match, I think Rian Evans actually was slightly more impressive on tour last year. I think Rian got quite a few tough draws in there. Yeah, well, I mean, you do when you're ranked so low, well, don't yeah, you? Well, yeah, that's kind of the problem with it, isn't it? Oh, we should also give a uh, shout out to uh, the the Asian Q school. We didn't even know yes. who was going to be uh, entered at the time of last recording, but I mean, the one big name everyone's excited by is uh, Mr. Poon Bastic. He's yeah, back on tour. Yeah, I think there's a few um, former pros that, that are back. Um, but yeah, the big name, of course, um, Dechawat. You know, I, I, I must admit, I, I thought he'd retired after he dropped off the tour. I didn't know he was still knocking about. But, um, oh, that's going to be box office, isn't it? Any match that, that he's in this year, surely has got to be contender to put put on the TV. Um, especially if he's playing, you know, one of the top players. Um, but yeah, yeah. No, I, I didn't recognise any of the other names in there. Um, uh, there. There was apparently a couple of other returnees to the tour, so... Um, I don't know. Uh, I, ca- I think one of them had a particularly long name. <laughs> um, where are we looking then? So Q2, uh, event three. Right. Um, maybe, I'm, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong because it says event two here, Dechawat Pumjang, and then Himanshu Dinesh Jain. So. Well, I, I believe there was a... Um... What was his name? There's a, there was a guy from Thailand who qualified. Yes. Who then they uh, they they took his tour card off him. Ah, and, uh, so that's what. So it must have been him that that was. Um, yeah, let's find his name. He's, he's he's only he's notable for. I think I read he's made the youngest ever professional one four seven. Um, oh right, okay. Hanuat. Tira Pong by Boon. That's him. Uh, presumably they refused his tour card because they knew that Dennis wouldn't be able to say that. <laughs> and John um, Parrott wouldn't have heard of him, so Yeah. <laughs> but he um he did he did win the tour card, but then uh the WPBSA and World Snooker Tour declined to offer him a tour card, citing <sighs> Serious disciplinary matters from when he was previously a pro in 2015. Right, okay. They've not disclosed what those matters were, but... um, Well, I mean, mean, considering, you know, we we don't... Well, uh, maybe we will like to get into politics one day on this podcast, um, but maybe not not today. Uh, But... um, this isn't even about politics. It's about Liang Wenbo um, and oh. his suspension from the tour, which uh, runs out in about a month's time, I think. So, yeah, I would like uh, to know yeah. what these serious disciplinary breaches are that mm-hmm. seven years after dropping off the tour, they're not willing to give him a new one. Yeah, it, it it does feel like, from the outside looking in, a bit of inconsistency, a bit of... Uh... Well, a bit. Um, I mean, you know, you had the well, whole John Higgins, um, you know, uh, scandal. And then Stephen mm-hmm. Lee, of course. Mm-hmm. One player got six months, one player, you know, 12 years or whatever it was. Um, well, and you had... Um... Uh, Kao Yupeng, who yes. was suspended for two years and he's now back on tour. Yeah, Jamie Jones as well. Yeah. Stuart Bingham, I, I think. Stuart Bingham, was he not? Well, yeah, I mean, that's the mad thing. A former world champion who, for the majority of his 30 years, has been a, a consummate professional, Stuart Bingham, mm. was banned for longer 
for betting on his own matches. Yeah. And Liang Bing, and Liang Wenbo was banned for an actual crime. Yes. Like, and yeah. that doesn't feel that doesn't sit right with me. <laughs> like. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's it's um. It's a bizarre one, you know. I'm sure we'll 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 talk about it at, at some point. But um, I mean, I don't want to get you know too too much into the details. But um, that's an interesting one. I, I hadn't heard that, so um, yeah. Uh, it does make you wonder why they let him enter the Q school anyway. Well, yeah, if he, well, yeah, if he didn't have a chance of qualifying, yeah. Uh, but it, then it, you it, know, you know, who's to say that the WPBSA actually runs the asian q school i had no idea yeah and also I, I, why does asia have a q school um separate from from the normal q school um i don't understand that uh, it's because it's not like a european q school the normal yeah, one and there, there was plenty of um players from china and thailand and Hong Kong in uh, in the normal Q school, I think. Uh, it just see, you well, know, I, I mean, no, careful with what I say here, but it it, it seems like a, an easier route to get on the tour to to go through the the Asian Q school rather than the 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 full fat Q school, if you you like, you know, the the mm. official one. Um, yeah. Because the the Asian Q school, if it wasn't for Dechawat Poomchang, I'm not sure anybody would have even known it it happened. Um, no, I I don't think I would have paid attention. Just, you know, it's a, just a strange one, really. But well, it reminds me of um, again when they used to have the snooker World Cup. Well, they still do have it. I think you know, presumably. I don't, I don't know. If I it's think it's every four time. years, so we must but be yeah, due one soon. But that uh, has, you know, one team for every nation, except China, who have two teams. <laughs> yes, China A, and China B. Uh... I never particularly knew why that was. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know whether it is literally China pumping in a load of money, so they give them an extra team, if it really is that simple. Um, I don't know. I so... mean, again, it's, it's we very rarely get, uh, you know... A transparent view of any of this as snooker fans. Mm. I mean, it seems like the world, the World Cup. Uh, the last one was twenty nineteen. Um, won by Higgins and Maguire for Scotland. So presumably, we'd have one next. But year. then there was one two years previous to that, and two years previous to that. So it was every two years for a little bit. You can understand why maybe it wasn't held last year, but. Well, especially looking at the Wikipedia page, it was in Bangkok and then it was in China. Yeah, so, Wuxi. Uh, we've, yeah, we've not had any events over there, so possibly that's maybe that's why they have two teams. They just they're the ones who fund it, probably. Yeah, yeah. It looks like in the uh, historically Ireland had two teams, and England had two teams, but I mean it's a completely different event in nineteen eighty five. Oh, this is interesting. So when okay, so when Thailand hosted it, they had two teams. So maybe it's, uh, uh, the host. Yeah, host nation mm. benefit. But mm. um, I mean, again, even if that is the reason, I still don't quite understand why. <laughs> why you would do that? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's not like a, if England host a World Cup, they go, "All right, guys, you could have two different <laughs> squads." <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Oh dear. Yes, you can field your under twenty one team as well. Yeah. Um, crazy, isn't it? But uh, some just to run down some of the other names of people that have uh, qualified uh, through other means. So you of course had the top four from last year's one one year ranking list, which was Ashley Hugill, um, Michael White, Alan mm. Taylor, and David Lilly. Me. I knew you'd be happy about that one. Um, the WSF Open champion, Si uh, Ju mm. you know the 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 famous um, uh, de defeat error of uh, Sean Murphy at the UK Championships. 
Oh, he's not an amateur anymore. He's then. not an amateur. Well, yeah, exactly. Um, we've got uh, Anton Kazakov, Ukrainian, um, junior oh. champion. Um, then we have Oliver Brown, who is the European champion. Then the under twenty one champion Dylan Emery. I feel like I've heard of Dylan Emery before. I think um, he maybe has popped up in a, a world championship qualifier right. or something like that. Um, and then the 2022 European champion. So Oliver Brown was the 2021 European champion. Uh, Andres Petrov from Estonia, interestingly. Um, Is that a... I, I believe that's a new country. Must be, talk? yeah. yeah. And then the European under-21 champion of 2022 was Ben Mertens. Um, you've got the Asia-Pacific qualifier, Ryan Thompson. Or Thomason. Um, hopefully, he's not another Steve Mifsud or whatever. Um, <laughs> if, if he plays one event, we'll be fine. Um, and then the sort of Latin America qualifier, Victor Sarkis. So, Brazilian. I mean, that, I think that's interesting because um, Iger Figueiredo had a very good season two years ago to stay on tour. But then all of last season, I don't think he played at all because it was too hard for him to get over because of COVID rules. Uh, and it would be devastating, really, if there's just two Brazilians who can't get over because, you know, I, I don't know what what the what the solution would be, whether it should be, whether World Snooker should help them get settled here so they actually... Have a chance because I think I think the problem with players from either Africa or or South America or, or Australia is often they go oh we can't afford to travel so it's like well maybe part of the tour card should be we'll put you up for we'll pay for at least like five months in the UK or something just so you can enter a few yeah tournaments. yeah no I I mean that's a, that's a good point uh, you know I, I, just while you were talking there I was thinking about other sports where you sort of have multiple nations playing in the same thing and i guess the only thing i can compare it to is um golf where you've got the pga tour in america you've got the european tour in europe and mm -hmm. you know um it's just a tough one I, I i guess i guess maybe maybe that would be a way forward if you know you have a a sort of America's tour, you have a European tour, you have a, a, a an Asian tour, and then they all come together for the big tournaments, if you like. Um, but, the, you know, it's a predominantly European-based game. So, yeah, that's tough. Um, there's no African qualifier this year, which is interesting. Um, the Q tour, highest-ranked player was Sean O'Sullivan. No relation is that, to is Ronnie. That because... Are we still waiting for the African qualifier? I'm not or? sure. I'm not sure. Because it's I've got the list up as well, and is <laughs> it's listed there. So you presume there yeah. will be one, but, uh, but it's blank. I think I think historically, sometimes for whatever reason, they hold their tournament later, and then okay. by the time an African player gets their visa, they join the tour in about November or something. Right. I think uh, who was the guy? Was it? Amin Amiri, was that his name? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Who had that very famous moment in the shootout where he messed up twice. But I think I remember watching that match in the shootout and they said it took him like six months to get a visa. So, again, it seems a bit weird to be like, we'll give yeah. you a tour card, but you can't play for ages. So, uh, Julian Leclerc is the other one from uh, Playoff. Uh, then we've got Peng, Yin Peng Yisong. For the China tour, and two more women on the tour this year. So you got Rebecca Kenner, who I know has, has played in a lot of the shootout tournaments, and uh, Nucharut or uh, Wong Haru Harutai. Um, no idea. I believe. Well, I I I literally know. I don't know how to say her her actual name, but I I know in the shootout. I think she has the nickname of Mink. Mink, I yes, I, you know, I remember that. It always makes me sad when um, people from other countries go by a nickname because nobody can be bothered to pronounce their name correctly. No. Um, but no, I think it is I think it is sad um, for them. But we've got plenty on tour where the names are fairly difficult to announce. Um, 
I, I I don't know if you remember if you remember very early in the Snooker nineteen life cycle, um, the ref didn't say a lot of the names, or at least some of the more obscure names. Wasn't it at one point just like players from Thailand or something like yeah, that? Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's like <laughs> he just hadn't recorded the more difficult ones yet. <laughs> <laughs> Must have slipped his mind. Yeah, yeah, it was so weird, wasn't it? Because yeah. I, I think I, I first noticed it when I think you played Kepchar and Nu. Mm. Literally, is a name that I can now say without even thinking about it. Well, and yeah, it, I, you know, it just goes. You know, five years ago, I'd probably have to go Kepchar and Nu because I'd kind of have to think. But it's just that's all it is for names. You just let you just keep saying them you keep hearing them you learn yeah. them and then you're absolutely fine yeah 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 i mean I, you know i think in general snooker does a reasonably good job of uh respecting people's names and you know particularly with the chinese players sort of the uh, apart from the dennis taylor young <laughs> chinese player <laughs> well yes phenomenon where he does yes. every single chinese player he goes oh this young chinese player because yeah. he just he doesn't want to. I mean, maybe part of it is he doesn't want to attempt to get it wrong. Maybe he's just, you know. Yes. Yeah. No. It's um, it's a good point. It's a good point. But um, yeah, Ding Jun, Ding Jong Wang, or what you know, whatever they call him. Um, mm. you'd think after seventeen years they'd get it right, but uh... you'd, you'd really hope so. They've had time, really. <laughs> um... It's not as if he's an obscure player. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Just a just a former world world championship finalist. Yes, know, yeah. Former um, number one. Yeah, yeah. Um. So yeah. I, think... Other than the oh, go on. Sorry, what were you going to say? I was going to say, what do you think of when, uh, Yang Bingtao? Yes, that's how you say it. But Rob Walker <laughs> says Yang Bingtao. <laughs> And I don't know whether he thinks that's the right way of saying it, but it's weird. Everyone else in the sport goes Yang Bing Chao. Yes. But when he announces him, he goes Yang Bing Chao like that. I know, and I, 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 know. I don't yeah. know with Rob Walker what he's on about because it's like either he's got it right and everyone else has got it wrong. But then if everyone else says one thing, you just look like a weird. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, he does. I, it's like. He, for the Zhao players, he, he's like Zhao, you know. He, yeah. He's really enunciating of certain noises. <laughs> that come out well, of his and, mouth. and worryingly, it it sounds very similar to someone doing a slightly dodgy Hong Kong impression, that kind of like <laughs> kung fu fighting kind of thing. Do you know what I yes, mean? Like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, perhaps all this time, Rob Walker it has just been a massive racist. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, it makes sense. <laughs> yeah. yes. That's why he had to uh, start literally licking Yang Bing Tao's carpet because he was just trying to distract himself. He exactly. went, no, I have to exactly. talk about the telly so I don't call you a slur accidentally. Yes, yeah, no, he was about to you know, shave his head and draw a, an England flag on his chest and, <laughs> you know... Uh... <laughs> But yes, uh, on that note, um, uh, the, 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 so some more players that are on the tour this year because I'm sure everybody's you know eager to to find out. Um, two invitational tour cards this year. Who are oh, they are for? They, have they gone to uh, players who are going to really make the most of it and enter every event? One of them might. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, Ken Doherty, of course. Um, and... oh, Ken, very loyal, good good representative for the sport. And he mm. always, you know, he makes use of the tour card. He, he he tries his best. He wants to be a real active figure on the tour when he gets these. I think he, you know, and he's still competitive, you know, for the most part. Yeah. Um, yeah. And yeah, then Hendry, yeah, but... of course, who... I watched Hendry. back, you, you know. Sorry, sorry, who? Hendry. <laughs> Colin that Hendry. Has no. he not played in many tournaments recently? Is that why I don't know his name? <laughs> yes, yeah. He's played about three tournaments in 10 years, I think. Um, but yeah, I, 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 weirdly, recently I watched back his first match back against mm. um, Matt Selt mm. in the Gibraltar. And. 
he played ridiculously well in that match. Yeah, he did do. He did. He played a good match there. For a second, I was worried you were going to say you rewatched a match with Jimmy White. Which <laughs> no, uh, no, that one. I, I have no. The worst televised snooker match I've ever seen in my life. Well, yeah. There was one. There was one frame where Stephen Hendry won it, and I think he had a high break of seven. And that was yes. put in the final black. No, it, it would. It was quite embarrassing, really. Uh, that was a dark day for the sport. But he was good. He was good. He was good in the Desalt match. I agree. Mm. Um, and you know, I feel he could be good if he just entered and worked hard. Like as much as Ronnie and Mark Williams downplay it, the reason they're good at their age is because they still put in the hours. They still mm. practice. They, they still actually try. And yeah, I feel like Hendry wants all the reward without any of the effort. Yeah. No, absolutely, I I agree. I think, I think the pandemic perhaps hit Hendry's comeback a little bit more than you might think. Um, I think had had there been crowds and stuff straight away, I think he would have played more. I think the fact he was waiting off, trying to wait for the crowds to come back, it's the sort the ship sort of sailed. I think he worked hard, very hard early on. Um. Mm. And then didn't enter tournaments because he, he he wanted the the crowds back. Um, but yeah, it is what it is. What well, he's got another two years. We'll see um, how he gets on in that time. And you know, I mean, I mean, where do we see invitational tour cards going in the next sort of five years? You know, quite possibly we'll have Jimmy White retired by then, Henry probably won't be playing anymore ken might be at a stage where he wants to give it up hopefully mark Hofer will be back in the top 64 by I think it's his ability you know uh, where... i'm trying to think are there any high profile names who we think might fall off who would be in that bracket because I guess somebody like a Matthew Stevens would be up there, but it's but tough. Everyone's actually no, not everyone so far because, uh, you know I think no wait yeah most of the ones recently have been to form world champions right other than Jimmy White yeah and James Watner I suppose wasn't but I guess he was more for his international yeah, yeah 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 um so I do wonder whether. Uh, Stevens would 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 get one because for a while I was thinking well maybe if they think you're you still competitive and you can still do well and you're high profile but then you know I I I found it weird that um if it's if it's about having a competitive tour and having the the best players in the 128. It's it's a mad world where Jimmy White gets a tour card, but uh, Michael White, who has won two ranking events far more recently than Jimmy, had to spend years trying to qualify to get back on. Um, yeah, yeah. And I just I'm just thinking, you know, I guess Matthew Stevens might be, as you say, one who is in who might be in trouble. Uh, but then, you know, I think. People like Ding and Sean Murphy have seen a downturn, but I can't. I still can't see them being outside the top forty. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean that that was going to be my next suggestion is that you know if if Sean Murphy was to drop off the tour, would would he get one? But I'm not convinced somebody like Sean Murphy, if he drops off, would would want to continue. You know, um, I mean, it would be it would be. Uh interesting because I, I feel like he's already started putting his feelers into the commentary box so you yeah. almost maybe he feels he's not got uh as many years left as as some players do because i think we're used to with the top three and with other players further down the likes of nigel bond or rod lawyer um lawler what I said, Rod Lawyer. Rod Lawyer. Who's he? <laughs> <laughs> he's 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 um he's 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 the plod and he's a lawyer at the same time. But do you know what I mean? All those all those names. We're used to just seeing players play for as long as they can until they mm. drop off, mm. and even even then, sometimes requalifying in their fifties. People like Peter Lyons and stuff like that. 
Mm. Whereas I do wonder whether Sean might almost be like, well, I'm in my 40s. I can make money from commentary and presenting. I can hang out, hang out the queue and say I've had a pretty damn good career. Like, Yeah, you, you know, I, I mean, only he'll know. I, I think if he has another really poor season this season, that'll set the tone. He, he, he usually goes through a little purple patch where he'll win a couple of tournaments and that'll keep him in the top 16 for the next two years. But um, I don't know. I mean, it, it certainly wouldn't, would be a different tour without him. I think he is a big presence on the on the tour. Um, but ultimately, it's it's what they what what they want to do and where they see their lives going. And if the the pure love for the sport isn't there, then what's the point? You know, for somebody like Sean who can, as you say, earn a wage elsewhere. Yeah. You know, he, he he definitely can, and he's um, you know I I like him on commentary, and I, I feel like he could be, you know, one of those who will, you know, if if it is the last year for JV and Dennis next year, I I fully expect it to be Crafty Ken, Angles McManus, and the magician Sean Murphy who are the more prominent voices. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I hope. Angles ends up back on the BBC. I think he was a bit of a miss this year. Um, yeah, he's I mean, uh, I... gone over to Eurosport now, hasn't he? So, uh, as Jimmy White would say, I I don't know how he can work in those fucking conditions. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. So, I mean, that's pretty much everybody. There are obviously the Asian Q School uh, winners, Mohammed Asif. Um, as Jad Iqbal, Dechawat Poomjang, and uh, Himanshu Dinesh Jin. Um, so, I mean, that's 30, what, what, 35 names um, going on to the tour. I, I believe we might have an oversubscribed tour this year. Um, well, I, I think I also, I also saw someone tweet today that uh, the Africa Championship final was tonight as well. So that Ooh. That spot, that spot will be filled tonight. Exciting. There's nothing on Wikipedia just yet, but um, no, we'll that keep your eye out. we will yeah. know who whoever's going to be the player. We'll will... update you on the next episode. Yeah. Yes. Um, but no, I, I mean, in, you know, it looks like a, an exciting season ahead. One of the smallest calendars I've seen for a little while. Um. I, although I, something I'm... was announced today, um, but we've recorded this over two days, so um, mm. some new news coming through today. I don't know if you saw it about the world mixed doubles. Um, yeah, I think that's, I mean, it's almost like they heard our podcast yes. before we released it. Well, yes, um... that's rather strange. I don't really know why Barry Hearn is hiding in my, my room, but, <laughs> you know. Uh... He's got to do something now he's stepped down. <laughs> yes. Um but that'll be an interesting tournament. I'm a bit disappointed it's at the Marshall Arena. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, and weirdly, we're going to have back-to-back tournaments at the Marshall Arena because it's the World Mixed Doubles on the 24th and 25th of September. And then on the 26th of September, the British Open starts at the Marshall Arena. So, um, Are they both uh, televised on ITV as well? I believe so, yes. I mean, I, I am... You know, I know everyone does always talk always about BBC and Eurosport, but I, I like the ITV coverage. Mm, it, it, yeah, it's I, I've said this before to Toby, I think, um, maybe to yourself, but for me, what what's disappointing about Eurosport's coverage is the the volume levels of the like the table and the crowd. On the BBC, I feel like you hear the the play at the table a lot more. You hear the referee a lot more. You hear the crowd a lot more. Whereas I think that's sort of drowned out on the Eurosport, and it's more about the commentary, which obviously yeah. the comments as the commentary isn't, you know, mm. JV. Um, yeah, I think that's an interesting choice, but you know what I. I do, 
feel like generally the Eurosport coverage is a bit more, uh, you know, it's like they they don't want to focus on the bells and whistles. They just want to mm. focus on the table. And maybe that's almost a deliberate plan by them to go, we're not going to have these distractions of any other loud noise. We're going to focus <laughs> completely on the snooker, which... I think most snooker fans prefer the bells and whistles. You prefer the excited commentator. You prefer the, <laughs> yeah. the crowd atmosphere. atmosphere. That's what makes it. I mean, you sport, say that, you Tom, know. but like, you know, I think we are very much in the minority. I, I, the amount of stuff I see on Twitter of people. Oh, are they? Know, are they? Are they the the loud minority though? That's the perhaps they are. I mean, viewing figures would suggest yes, but you know, it, it's like the F one argument of. People, you know, have to pay some sort of subscription to have Eurosport. You know, you're always going to get bigger viewing figures on a terrestrial channel, especially if it's the BBC. So, you know, how much of that is because it's free to air rather than uh, through popularity? Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, that's, that's true. But um, I don't know. I, 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 I just think anyone... For me, I, I don't see why you choose Eurosport if BBC is offering it at the same time. Mm. Like, mm. yeah, I mean, I agree with you. I think the, the the lineup for BBC is is just in a different league for me. The broadcasting, the, the you know the even the sort of VTs that they put together, other than the um, the stat pack in the old abandoned warehouse and whatever. Well, but... not not not. Not just the the actual coverage, but I think culturally, mm. BBC and Snooker fit together because mm. they've, it's been on there for yeah, you know yeah, 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 sixty odd years or something stupid, mm. and mm. it you, you can't like force that or or just pull it out of thin mm. air. And it's like the know, Crucible, isn't it? You know the Crucible, and yeah. uh, and the World Championship. It's it's just know. part of the history and part of the. Uh, you know the the experience, but um, mm. as you said, I've just checked, and we do have an oversubscribed tour. We have one hundred and thirty one players. So, so interestingly, Hendry might not even get the opportunity to play it, even if he wants to. I believe. Well, I'm, I'm, I don't know because I mean, has there been any tournaments where all one hundred twenty eight players enter, or have that always been top ups? I I don't. Well, I'm not sure we've ever end. had. A tour with over 128 players. So, mm, um, you know, I mean, for three people not to enter, you know, for for instance, the UK Championship, or even the World Champ. I know the World Championship has extra players anyway, but you know, if you think about the UK Championship, perhaps being one of the biggest events of the season, I don't know. I don't know, but then you could. Uh... I'm going to have a quick check now. Who, if we can find out who didn't enter the UK Championship? Yeah, or... I guess it was still kind of pandemic. I mean, Hendry didn't. Yeah. Did, did no, Hendry did, didn't he? Yeah, he did enter that. Oh, I know. I can't see who didn't enter, it. but there were amateurs, of course, because. Yeah. Whole, uh, but Berkeley. then there was only 121 professional players last year, I think. That's that's very true. So of course, it's uh, it's going to be interesting. Uh, absolutely, I think. Um, I think as always, it'll take a while for the season to get going. You know, I mean, we've got the European Masters on the 16th of August, so still quite a long time away, really. Um, well, until the first proper one. Maybe they're basically betting on you know at least maybe they're oversubscribed because of uh travel problems mm. and COVID yeah. problems and they're they're anticipating that there that will judd be and jack will have covid again yeah exactly yeah or yeah. there'll be there'll be an ib for or something or you know <laughs> yes or or hendry will be uh not interested that week <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Or just you know, or, or, just, you or know. Robertson will turn up at the wrong Barnsley. Exactly, they're yeah. just putting they're putting a, a safety net in case that happens. Yes, 
No, absolutely. Um, but no, it should be a it should be a good season. I think. Um, what's your prediction in terms of you know what 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 do you think will be the the running theme of this season? I don't think we're going to have one like last season where we had so many different winners. I don't. I think it's unlikely that will happen again. I think this season we might see uh, probably even more than last year, and a, and a, a sort of increased uh, winning streak from players from Asia. Because I think last year we had Zing Tong, we had Fang Zheng Yi, uh, and did, didn't did someone else win? I can't remember if someone I think else Bing did. Tao got to a, a couple of finals, didn't he? But... Yeah, so I so I feel like um, they're gonna just continue to build on that, and I think there's, a, there's every chance that I fancy Zing Tong to at least get another ranking title. Mm. Frankly, like um, so I think it could be a big. Big season for uh, a lot of the the young Chinese players, as Dennis would say. Yeah. Um, Especially Poom it's... Poom Jiang of Thailand. Yeah, I hope that. I, I hope he wins something. Frankly, that'd be brilliant. I, I want him to win the shootout. <laughs> He's the first the place to win the shootout. <laughs> Have you seen him in the shootout before? Hey. Eh? Video of him in the shootout on YouTube. Uh, I, well, they... yeah, I don't remember him, but I will uh, check it out. Well, well, because he plays against uh, against someone who's taking it really seriously because they want to <laughs> win to get their ranking up, and he just he basically goes on and takes the piss. <laughs> <laughs> you can see he's really waving at the crowd, having a great time, and when they do the lag, he just smacks, <laughs> and it, the ball just goes like boing, 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 boing. <laughs> <laughs> he just properly has yeah. a laugh of it, so he he won't win the shootout like that, but he'll enjoy it, which is nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, uh, I yeah. Sorry, what are your um, what are your uh, predictions for the the season? I think it's going to go one or two ways uh, for the class of ninety two. I either think mm-hmm. it's going to be a season where they drop off a little bit, mm-hmm. or at least one of them does. Um, or I, I mean, I think Ronnie's now sort of broken the the or got the monkey off his back of losing a load of finals. He's won a couple now, so I, perhaps we'll see him more regularly in the winners' enclosure again. Because let's be honest, over the last three years, I think he's probably been in more finals than anyone. So yeah, um, if he can convert a couple of them, I think he'll still be number one. Um, I think, I think we'll see. You know, one of the likes of um Selby or Murphy or Robertson or Maguire or you know somebody of that ilk come back into form and um and win a few tournaments this season. Um, but yeah, I, I'm I'm with you. I think we'll see. The emergence of new talent. I think we're starting to get to that point where the sort of changing of the guard is happening a little bit. Um, I don't think it's going to be too much, but maybe another another emerging player, and uh, hopefully, you know, hopefully we'll see a, a few new faces in the top sixteen. I think that would be nice, and um, you know, I think there's a few that are in in trouble in that yeah. top sixteen. You know, the likes of Bingham. The likes of uh, Murphy, of course. You know we, we've mentioned both both Bingham and Murphy are in top of state in the top sixteen purely because of the world championship. They've yeah. they both had decent crucible form in the past two years, and that's kind of kept them in it. And mm. uh, I think they'll both be, you know, I think the story of the last three years for both of them is you need a good season to end the year in the top sixteen, and they've both managed to do it, but yeah. only by the crucible no other nothing else so i mean just just as a as a um a final thing really the provisional end of season rankings so this is obviously before any Ooh. tournaments have been played um ronnie number 1 um mm-hmm. robertson number 2 trump number 3 uh, zing tong number 4 
Um, wow, Higgins and Williams name. rounded out the top six, and then sort of I'll I'll just go through some maybe surprises in the top sixteen. Um, so at number eleven, Jose and Vafai. Wow. Um, number thirteen, Ricky Walden. Number oh, fourteen, gonna... Jimmy Robertson. Oh, you were going to say Jimmy White? No, not Jimmy White. <laughs> I'm afraid. No. Um. Strangely, Stephen Maguire, number nineteen. Don't really know where that's come from. I guess it's you know he got the quarters, didn't he, this year? Um. Mark Selby, number twenty-two. Uh, wow. So potentially a, a player in trouble. You know, he didn't have a great season last year. Obviously, he had issues off the table, but um, he's actually only carrying 94,000 ranking points from the 21-22 season into this year. Sean Murphy down at 35 there. Wow. Um, where else are we looking at? Uh, uh, Ding, Ding Zhongwei, where's he? Ding, 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 ding. Um... 31 so fairly similar to where he is i think i think he saved himself towards the end of the season with a couple of good results jimmy white number 90 mm. you know um, good stuff that'd be um, a good finish for jimmy <laughs> yes absolutely uh anybody else um let's chat about ricky walden because i yes. think he had you know, a very good season last year. He 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 seemed to be getting back to close to his best. He had a, a good mm. run in a few tournaments. Mm. Uh, was very unlucky to not be in the top sixteen. I think he he just missed out right near the end. I think to to make the crucible. And I be think in the top it, 16. I, th- I think he he only just missed out on the tour championship. And had he qualified for that, I think he would have been a dead cert for the um. For the crucible so so do you do you fancy uh of course uh the listeners he's your your second favorite player i believe he is you, yeah yeah he is do you, fan- uh, do you fancy him to be in the winner's circle again uh, i hope so i think i think potentially tournaments like the home nations events um or the british open something like that is is going to be up ricky walden's sort of avenue maybe the german masters you know that that sort of tournament where i think we do quite often see a shock winner of, of those type of tournaments um of course we had anthony hamilton a few years ago winning the german masters so you know i, I do think um no i do i i hope he can win a tournament the only thing i will say is i for me, it doesn't look like there's a lot of tournaments out there this year, which, you know, it's crazy to say when there's still something like 14, well, more than that, probably more like, what is it, 22 tournaments or something like that. But, um, well, I wonder to... whether they'll be, you know, considering we have the a tournament announced just today, I wonder whether they're going to have more added throughout the season because there must surely be more than that because there's yeah. no no events in china i presume at the moment yeah again you know nothing on there um they have got a potential invitational event um lined up between the 6th and 9th of october no idea what that could be um i mean it's a bit strange considering they had a uh asian q school to not have any ranking events there because if you can host a q school Surely you can also. Well, I mean the six red world championships um, back this year in Bangkok, so <laughs> which you know it might be the Marshall Arena in Bangkok. Who knows? <laughs> um, <laughs> but we'll see. Um, I mean, I think it is a very interesting time for Stuga because we we've also got this thing about um, the sort of taboo nature of of betting sponsors at the moment mm-hmm. um and obviously snooker is kind of revolving around kazoo <laughs> and um yeah I, i'm not you know, betting tournaments uh bet, betting companies sorry i have no idea what what how kazoo can afford it or what, what all that is about but um... uh, it, it worries me a lot that you know i think i might have seen you say it at some point or maybe we talked about it you know if kazoo went bust 
Mm. Um, you know, snooker would be in a very, very tough position. Would you, um, would, do you think you might sponsor one of the events? (laughs) Yes. If they're, if they're happy with a prize pot of a hundred quid or whatever, then (laughs) yes, perhaps. Um, The Captain Captain Goodspeed Invitational. uh, Yes. The Captain Goodspeed Benson and Hedges Masters. (laughs) (laughs) Um, no, it'll. Uh, I I think I think that's where snooker's got got to look now. I think I think they're desperate to get back to China. They're desperate to expand the world, the the, the game globally. But I think their main priorities surely got to be we got to find some new sponsors and and some sustainable sponsors. You know, um, they obviously survived not being able to have tobacco sponsors um yeah. they sort of replaced that with betting companies and now that's become taboo where and, well, and, where well, do you go i think it's worth saying they did have some some tricky years when the tobacco sponsors stopped you know it, well i mean yeah it straight like, after that that's, that's where that's we what, had the six tournament seasons and whatever do you know what i mean to barry hearn stepping in so mm. um it's going to be tricky times because, uh, and I think you know, football clubs will have similar problems and all that stuff. But as you say, it's so dependent on betting sponsorship that uh, I mean, unless now is it all going to be car sponsorship? Like, we'll go compare start sponsor and stuff, and all, all these different people. <laughs> the go compare open. <laughs> <laughs> the yeah. compared, the compared a mere cash shootout. <laughs> <laughs> oh god uh it's gonna happen now isn't it yeah uh, yeah and she and has wheels open <laughs> <laughs> and when they walk down they play the she is wheel sweep tune <laughs> all the players as they come down the churchill classic <laughs> <laughs> i mean I'd, i would think to be honest i think maybe sponsored would sponsors would be more inclined to do it if they had more of a say in stuff like <laughs> You know, if if Churchill sponsor it, then you don't have Rob Walker. You have the Churchill dog and outside the players or something. Yeah, yeah. Oh God. <laughs> Are you ready for Ronnie O'Sullivan? <laughs> oh yes. And then Ronnie comes out. You know that kind of thing. Oh dear. Oh, I mean, but yeah, I mean, I think that is just a thing with sport in general. Over the next few mm. years, I think there's going to be a big transition, and yeah. I think it's got to the point where there's there's far too much money in these sports and um and i think that's kind of what puts off your classic sponsors really or your well not classic because they've never been sponsors really but you know you're like the (laughs) the little open or whatever you know (laughs) what puts little off sponsoring snooker is that they can't afford multi-million pound deals like yeah Bet Fred can, you know. Um... Well, what I what I'm I'm gonna do, Joe. Just on on that note, is I've there's a a page on the the website Q Tracker where you can see uh some of the previous sponsors for events and stuff like that, and how many tournaments they they sponsored. Um, and so I'm just gonna read some of the some of the ones out that aren't. I mean, you have Benson Hedges Embassy. Coral, Rothmans, Bet Victor, Bet Brit, all those normal ones. <laughs> uh, News of the World, they, they used to sponsor a snooker event. Wow. Back when that existed. Uh, John Smith. Okay. Uh, who else? <laughs> Creative Dental Clinic. Right. The Bank of Beijing, they've, they've sponsored events. Uh, the Daily Mail, they sponsored the snooker. <laughs> Dr. Martins. <laughs> yes, a uniform policy in the in that tournament, yeah. Apparently, Dulux, they sponsored free oh, events. Oh, God. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you can have... Nest Cafe, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Kellogg's. I mean, this is beautiful. <laughs> Strongbow? 
I mean, Pontins. I remember Pontins from the old snooker games. So and yeah. Ronnie O'Sullivan they... has won the 2023 <laughs> Kit Kat World Championship. <laughs> I mean, did you know that Kit Kat have actually sponsored an event? Have they actually? Did you just make that up? <laughs> no, I made as, that up. As, yeah. as you said it, I just read the name Kit Kat. Kit Kat have sponsored a snooker event. <laughs> what event was it of interest? Or let's doesn't Google, not say. Let's Google Kit Kat snooker. There must be. <laughs> the Take a break. Have a, have a break. What? No way. Oh no! Sorry. The 1985 Kit Kat break for world champions. It was called. <laughs> what you thought it might be the world championship? I thought it was the world championship. Yeah. And no, the 19... most famous one as well. 1985. Yeah, 1985, champion Dennis Taylor, runner-up Steve Davis. I mean, it's almost a world championship. But, uh, yeah, the kits are Kit Kat sponsored that in 1985. I mean, I, I would love weird stuff like that again. You know, I think yeah. it... Um... But this is the problem. They they w- wouldn't have the money just to pay out the prize mm. money for a world right. championship, you know. Half a mil yeah. for the winner. You know, it's just... Yeah, but I don't know what cat. sponsors golf um, events. I've no idea. Um, I don't know. You know, I don't know. But we need Kit Kat back. That's what we're saying. <laughs> Kit Kat to sponsor the World Championship after next year. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he's had a he's had a century break. Do you know what he wants now? He wants a lovely Kit Kat. You could say that after every century break. Yeah, after, well, instead of you know the, them donating money to like the Jesse May Trust, they'll be donating like Easter eggs or something like that. <laughs> yeah, Kit Kat chunkies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'd love to watch like the Cadbury Masters. That'd, that'd be great. <laughs> yeah, and the cream, the cream egg cup. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would be beautiful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, this uh, this has gone on a bit of a tangent. Um... <laughs> But uh, yes, it'll c- get you coming back for more, I'm sure. Everyone at home listening to this oh, nonsense. Yeah. <laughs> Comment below if you have any suggestions for, for new sponsors. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And if Barry, if you're listening, you need to get on the blower to Nestle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Welcome to the Maltesers UK Championship. <laughs> Rob Walker shouting that out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think I think more of these sponsors would be excited, as I said, if you <laughs> if you did, they had a real say in it. So they they, they forced Raborka to, you know, eat a load of Maltesers <laughs> before he announces the players. Yeah, oh, like the 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 players have to come out in like red and white waistcoats and with like brown dots on the waistcoat. <laughs> that looks like Maltesers. <laughs> <laughs> every time they put every time they put the brown ball, they have to eat them all too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that they're, they're only allowed to put the reds and browns, and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, every other colour is replaced with a brown. <laughs> We've made a new format here. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> Maltese are varied. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have it in Malta, uh, you know. <laughs> yeah. Maltese uh, and Malta uh, Cup. And have Tory Drago as the um, the main attraction. <laughs> oh, he needs to come back, Tony Drago. <laughs> I I heard rumours he was going to play in the seniors, but uh, it hasn't come to fruition yet. He but... should do. They should get him back. He's a proper. <laughs> He's proper a character, legend. isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. I'm waiting for Quinton Hans uh, return as well. So. <laughs> you know, fingers crossed. And Stephen Lee, of course. Oh, he should get a tour card. <laughs> yeah. yeah, invitational tour card, Stephen Lee. <laughs> yeah. All right, shall we? Shall we wrap it up there, Joe? I think we should. Awesome. So, uh, comment below with your sponsor suggestions, please, because <laughs> that's a, a nice little bit of fun. Uh, <laughs> let us know who you think. That's a good game. Uh, Maybe we should do that actually. 
let's let's say because we did a we did the predictions for who will qualify through Q school. So Joe, of these of the twelve players, who do you think will be ranked the highest at the end of the season out of those twelve? Um I'm just I'm just getting a list of the, the players up. Um you know what, I've got to go with me with me boy Jensen Kendrick, haven't I? You do, yeah, yeah. I mean you've you've introduced him to the world, so there we go. Well yeah. You briefly renamed him earlier. Um <laughs> Yeah, called him Jason, yeah. Uh, just like Dennis really, isn't it? Uh, yeah, you, you're behind by the BBC in no time. <laughs> I think I'm going to go for... Uh, mm, I mean, yeah. let's go with... I can't see past Fergal, you know, and I feel like he's the obvious answer, so it's going to backfire. But, um, <laughs> you know, I, I feel like he's going to... Uh, Light up the the top four once Not more. Not Poomjang uh... then, eh? Oh, my allowed Poomjang. Okay, Poomjang. He's going to be ranked number one. Oh, he's a Q school uh, graduate. Okay, I, okay, okay. Detrat Poomjang. He's number <laughs> one. He's somehow going to win the world championship. And he, he championship. just he's going to clean sweep the <laughs> the season. <laughs> Imagine if Jensen uh, Kendrick did that. <laughs> We'd look like right mugs, wouldn't we? Uh, oh, well, I would. Putting, yeah, putting, you, you didn't say anything. To be fair, um, I'm seeing if um, they're taking part in Q School, uh, not Q School, the Championship League. Yeah, he is. He's in uh, Group Twelve with Mark Allen and Stuart Carrington. So we'll we'll get to see him there. I'm seeing if uh, Detchawat is in there. Uh, Marco Fu's playing in it actually. Oh, lovely! Good to see him back. Group Twenty Two. Um. No, I can't see Detchawat in there, so... I wonder whether it's um too close to Q-School for some of the players to get their entries on there. Yeah, I mean, some some of them, um, some of the sort of groups haven't uh, got players in them yet, so maybe there's going to be more entries. It'll be Quentin Ham. <laughs> Stephen Lee. Yeah, they'll both turn up. Yeah, and... Kirk Stevens, just for a wild card. <laughs> and, uh... Right, well, thank you very much, Joe. It's a pleasure yeah, as always. Always, yeah. Thanks for having uh, me. Make sure, make sure you go on Joe's YouTube and comment on all his non-snooker videos, asking where is Snooker 19. <laughs> yeah. Please do. <laughs> don't, don't do that. There's already enough annoying people doing that. <laughs> we don't want to... We don't wanna, uh, Make Joe cancel the, the series through pure... <laughs> through spite. Yeah. yeah. Yes, uh, thanks for listening, and we'll see you guys soon.